What's up, cool people? I'm Matt Conroy, coming at you with another game review. And so this time around, I'm going to be looking at the WRC6 video game, which I am fairly certain stands for World Rally Championship. Um, now, how is it that I haven't completed all the stages, despite the fact that I've done the entire main campaign thing? I don't know. Um... Let me just go to a quick game, maybe. Well, before I get into that. Um, so obviously this is a racing game. It's rally racing, though, which is different from most in that you don't race alongside other cars. It, everything kind of like a time trial sort of thing. But um, what you do in this particular game is you go through... This here driving test, right right off the bat, um, they kind of assess your driving level and adjust the difficulty of the game in relation to that. So I think that's a nice little feature, and I will say I think it's pretty good. Um, and by that I mean like I th I think it's. I think the game is pretty good at deciding the appropriate difficulty based on the driving test. And there's a fair number of different rallies you can participate in. Um, heck, how many does the game say there are? It says there are 14 total rallies um, with a total of 67 stages apparently. I don't know how I haven't done all of them because I definitely went through each career level. Um, oh yeah, so after you do the driving test, it starts you off in your career. It starts you off at like a low level tier, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> like It starts you off with, you know easier competition and lets you get used to the game a little bit more but also the cars are slightly lower performance um, and all throughout you can look at you know what team you sign up with um, I guess I should mention you you will like you sign contracts with certain teams that the they'll have a particular strategy as you can see kind of toward the middle of the screen there i tend to go with the flexible just because it's like well um i guess however i drive is good then uh, the other strategies will typically be go as fast as possible no matter what the cost or you know like complete you got to complete the course as quickly as possible they don't care how much you have to keep repairing and that kind of stuff or the other strategy is play it safe, do as little damage to the car as possible, and you'll be good that way. But I think the flexible strategy is best just because like, it allows you to race your own way. And you pretty much just need to be concerned with getting the highest place in each championship that you can. In each, each rally, I mean. Um, and you can look... Throughout the rankings here, I technically, by the game standards, started a new career season, even though I haven't actually done anything with it, nor will I. But you can see the rankings here throughout the entire process, and generally speaking, as I went through this, I didn't let myself end up with less than third in any of the championships you can also at any time look through the calendar and see what's coming up and the different races you'll be part of um but anyway so yeah you go through starting off at a lower tier um and then if you do well enough in that you'll have the chance to upgrade to the next competition level and you'll sign a contract for them there's three different ones basically within the game um, I think there's junior 
WRC, WRC2, and then just the regular WRC competitive tier, which is supposed to be equivalent to what the real life competitive scene would be, I guess. Anyway, um, I suppose I can try and find a really short course or something like that to run through. 4.32 kilometers, maybe. Um, not, I'm not doing a course on snow. Um, you will encounter a couple of different surface types. Like, I don't know if you've seen me going through, but you've got gravel here, snow, tarmac. That's, those are pretty much the only ones that you'll see. Ooh, I could do one of these, okay. Um, and, you know, the type of... The type of surface will obviously affect how you need to drive on it and that sort of thing. And there are, are obviously different ways to tweak the settings and that kind of stuff. Um... But I think you'll see the rest of it as I start driving through here. Now you will occasionally see, th this is an exception, like not the norm for this game, but you will have some places like this. You will see some places like this where it looks kind of like you're racing alongside somebody else. Um, but now, as you can see, going across the top, you'll be given kind of notes or suggestions on how you should approach certain turns and sections of the course. Uh, controls are pretty much what you would figure they would be. You know, right triggers go, left triggers break. Um, there's also... Um, there's also B for like a handbrake sort of thing. That's especially good if you want to take a really tight turn or do any drifting or different things like that. That that I did right there is generally not what you want to do in this game. Yeah, like that. Um, but I am not the greatest at this game, I will admit that. <laughs> But, yeah, so, like I said, you get the suggestions up top, which aren't necessarily always super reliable, especially on certain courses. Uh, there were, I think, two different places where the suggested turn and all that kind of stuff actually would have taken me in completely the wrong direction. So, I don't know. There are a few things like that here and there that aren't exactly as they should be. But on the whole, it's not terrible. Um, let me get you into a more typical event within this game. And then you'll kind of get more of an understanding of how it generally works. Um, I will say there are a lot of times I had to restart certain stages many multiple times over. Um, I do think there is a limit to how many times they allow you to restart a stage. But I couldn't really keep track of what that limit was. Yeah. It, it takes a little while also to get used to the directions and what they mean and that kind of stuff. Um, but once you get that figured out, generally this game is a lot easier. Because then you know what kind of turns are coming up. There will be a lot of places where you're going somewhat blind into the turns, which is why you really need to rely on the directions that are at the top. That one was a little hard to tell because all it said was just a 
twisty left, which could be any number of things. But yeah, so basically the whole game is a bunch of time trials, and you will be, assuming you go through the entire career at each different level, you will be repeating stages a lot, so it can get a little... Um, it can get a little bothersome with how much you need to repeat all these things. Um, and it might get a little mundane if it all seems too easy. But again, the driving test at the beginning is supposed to keep it from being that easy. And I would say, you know, given... Given how much I had to restart the courses, um, the difficulty setting was probably pretty fair, because, um, like I said, there were some courses I had to restart a bunch, um, but others that I basically didn't need to restart at all. That right there was, an, was a handbrake turn. <laughs> Um, but anyway, sorry. Sidetrack. Um, yeah, one, of the, one of the things that does bother me about this game is, like I said, sometimes the directions aren't super reliable. Especially, especially threes. Like, I feel that threes in this game could mean just about anything for the severity of the turn. But, anyway, um, other things to mention, controls do generally respond the way that they're supposed to at least, um, but yeah, it can also get very frustrating the difference between first place and last, because this is the type of thing where it's literally a matter of seconds between you being in first and being all the way down here in 19th place. So it's not even eight full seconds. But if you do well, then, you know, the time will add up. <laughs> I, f I found frequently towards the end of going through the career in this game that you know, there were times when I would get a lead early on from the first event, and then I would just keep building on that lead. There was one rally where I even finished with nearly an entire minute, you know, where I was ahead, meaning quicker, than everybody else. And that's... kind of insane. <laughs> I don't think that's very realistic. But anyway, um, I don't know. <laughs> I realize I've reviewed quite a few racing games as of late. They've just been coming up on Xbox Live Gold, which is why I've been playing them. And a fair number of them to tend to take up more than a tiny bit of space on the hard drive, which is another reason I've been playing them. But anyway... I suppose, that, I suppose that gives you a general feel for what happens in this game. I haven't done any of the multiplayer, so I don't know for sure what that's like. And I assume that is what I would need to do to unlock these events here. Maybe that's why I haven't completed all the stages in the rallies. But anyway. So. I, you know, I... I would say, overall, it's a fairly solid game. It is what it should be, essentially. Although this is apparently like the sixth game in the series. Thus the six. Either that or it's just because it was supposed to be for 2016, maybe? There are things within the game that would seem to indicate that too. But anyway, this is not the first time they've done this game. Or a version of this game. So I would hope they've, you know, figured a few things out by now. Um, but, yeah, so, I don't know. Might be worth your time. Assuming you're fairly patient. And probably 
<laughs> you probably would not do well if you're a perfectionist, or maybe you would, maybe you'd get a major amount of satisfaction at realizing you could pretty much optimize your run through a particular course. In which case, hey, this is definitely <laughs> a good game to do that kind of thing, because it it certainly tends to demand a high amount of precision, I guess is the best way to put it. Like, as you noticed with that last, you know, course that I was doing there, I was eight seconds behind the lead, and I didn't even necessarily have that bad of a run. <laughs> it's just the way that it is sometimes with this game. Um, but yeah, there, there will be times like that where it seems like you did barely anything wrong, and you'll be way down low in the rankings, but then there will be other times where it's like, oh geez, I messed up a bunch, but you'll get to the end and somehow realize that you're like 10 seconds ahead of everybody else. So, a little bit inconsistent there, but I think it all kind of balances out, which is why I would say, on the whole, this game isn't too bad. But, I don't know, maybe check it out for yourself. Especially if you downloaded it with the Xbox Live Games with Gold. But, yeah, those are my thoughts on it. Um, it is a rated E game, obviously, because all it is is racing. There's literally nothing else that you do in it. Not even stuff like in Forza where there's the occasional sidetrack of, hey, there's a big thing going on that's actually some, you know, huge party event thing. No, it's, it's just racing. Simple as that. So, um, if you've played this game, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. Or if there are other games that you would like me to review, especially if they've come out on Xbox Live Gold. Um, give me those suggestions down in the comments as well. Um, depending on if I've started playing the game or not already, I might do a, a Let's Play series on it, or I might do just a simple review like this. But anyway, that's all I've got, I guess. So... As always, like and share if you enjoyed the video, subscribe, click the bell, do all that good stuff. Just look down in the description if you want to know how to keep track, keep track of my videos and all my latest activity. Um, as I said, leave comments with your thoughts on this game or others you'd like me to play. All that good stuff. So that's it. I uh, suppose that's the only bit you'll see of me playing this game. So, um, as always... I hope you're all doing well. Hopefully I'll see you for the next video, whatever it might happen to be. But until then, stay cool, people.